Good morning guys. Well, it's a frosty morning here in the woods and I'm just enjoying my walk. It's a little bit windy. I could do without the wind, but what can I say? There's no snow and uh, we're just uh, almost finishing up April. So May's on the way. I'm excited. Uh, I wanted to tell you that I did really well with my maple syrup this year and today's episode is all about how I made some maple syrup. So take a look here. This is a sample of what I made this year and I purposefully in the sun right now uh, just to show you the beautiful color. Um, there's many different colors I got this season but this was the first part of the uh, the tap uh, for maple syrup. So I want to show you how uh, we make maple syrup. At the end of the video I'm going to show you how to make maple sugar. That was a request that I had. So come along. It'll be lots of fun. We're going to go inside. And I'll show you how I boiled down the sap to make maple syrup. So at the end of February and through March, I tapped a red maple here at the property. I have tons of red maple and sugar maple, but I wanted to make it manageable for me this year. So I chose a tree really close to the cabin and I have a little setup. and I'll just show you a little bit about that. There's the red maple right there. And as you can see, uh, it's really close to the cabin. So really easy for me to get the sap from the tree. Early in the season, there was snow so I could kind of insulate the buckets with the snow to keep it nice and cold. What you need is a 20 liter pail, some clear tubing and the 5 16th taps. I like the small taps because they really don't make a very large hole in the tree and the tree can heal up nicely after you're done tapping. This is quite a large tree. I drilled holes at waist height so you can see the saps running nicely there. Temperatures in the day were plus 5 at night minus 5. And there we go. There's a close up of the tap as you can see it's just plastic. You can go old school with the metal taps if you want. They're just a little bit larger. And I'm just using a bit of a drop line there and I use a bit of a Y connector so that I can connect each tap to one 20 liter pail. So there you can see the sap is dripping once I've installed it into the tree. And uh, the two lines there go into each 20 liter pail. And I would just check it daily to see if uh, you know there's enough sap in there. I left mine for a few days obviously because I don't live at the cabin full time. When I uh, was done with my tapping I would put the um, sap in a couple of pails and I would bring it back to town. You could certainly use a wood stove or a wood fired evaporator in the woods to make your syrup but let's go in the house and I'll show you how I did it. So what I did was I took the sap and I strained it before I put it into some pans on the stove. You want a lot of surface area to boil off your sap. Your house will get really hot and sticky. Open some windows. You notice here there's some foam accumulating as it's boiling. I just take that off with a little strainer here just so it doesn't spill over the top. You're going to be boiling for quite some time, many hours, and uh, you want to finish the syrup when it's at 220 Fahrenheit approximately. So there you can see it's uh, been going for several hours. It's basically 40 liters of sap to one liter of syrup. So you got to go for quite some time when you're using those 20 liter pails. As we're getting close there, uh, you can see the bubbles start to thicken up. So you want to pay really close attention because sap will uh, it'll go too far really quickly. Uh, and you don't want to make hardball candy when you don't mean to do it. So keep an eye on it right there. And then uh, when you're getting really close, as you can see here, we're right at the 220. We're ready to get this um, filtered and put into bottles. So uh, you'll keep a really close eye on it there. Finished syrup is uh, measured on the brick scale at 66 degrees bricks. Here's the Orlon filter. It's a food grade Orlon filter and you pour your hot sap directly through there and it's going to strain out any particulate. When you're doing late season syrup, you want to pre-filter it first because there's lots of other debris and nitre and things like that that come out of your hot sap and it will clog your Orlon filter really badly. So take my advice on that one. Here's some finished maple syrup, end of the season syrup, nice and dark, and I've bottled it in nice clean bottles. Isn't that pretty? Now that we have the glorious maple syrup, let's head in the kitchen and make some maple sugar. So I just want to show you the extremes in uh, color grades that I got from that red maple. Here we are at the beginning of the season. We have uh, a golden maple syrup, so really, really light color, very light flavor. Here at the end of the season, I have a more robust syrup. This one would be considered a dark. We have four color grades here in Canada for grade A maple syrup. They're golden, amber, dark, and extra dark. So the darker ones are more suited for baking, have a really strong, robust flavor. The lighter one has a very delicate taste. When you're making maple sugar, you want to stick to the lighter colors of maple syrup. 
so you don't need too many things to make maple sugar. You need some maple syrup, preferably a lighter grade if you have it handy, uh, and a wooden spoon and a candy thermometer, uh, basically one to one for what you're gonna get. So if you put in a cup of maple syrup, you'll get a cup of maple sugar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up the maple syrup uh, on the stove here. I'm gonna probably set it to a medium, medium temperature there, medium high. We wanna get a good boiling going, but we don't wanna scorch the bottom of it. And here you can see my candy thermometer. We are going to heat up the maple syrup to hard ball. So it's gonna be up to 260 Fahrenheit. So be safe guys, this is really, really hot. And once we get it to that point, we will cool it briefly. And then we're gonna use the wooden spoon to stir like crazy. And you'll see the magical transformation of maple syrup to maple sugar. So this really hasn't been very long, uh, maybe five to seven minutes and it is boiling like crazy. You can see here the bubbles are ascending up the pot. Good thing I've got a nice deep pot to prevent it from spilling over and burning on the stove. Um, if you don't have such a deep pot, you might be into some trouble. You can put a little bit of a ring of butter around the top of the pot to prevent the syrup from boiling over. Periodically, I'm gonna to have to tip it like that just so that the bulb of the thermometer is uh, submerged in the really hot syrup to get a bit more of an accurate reading on the temperature. Don't be tempted to stir the maple syrup at this point. You don't wanna prematurely induce the crystals. All right, so we're right there. We're right at the hardball uh, candy stage. Take a look at how it looks now. Really thick. When the bubbles pop, you can just hear a different sound to them. So right now, what I'm gonna do um, when we hit right on the hardball line is I'm gonna take it off the heat, let it cool for just a couple minutes there, and then I'm gonna start stirring vigorously. Some people will put it in, um, you know, another, like a, using a beater or blender. Um, to mix it up, but I'm going to go old school style and use a wooden spoon. Definitely changing texture there. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is exciting. Wow, this happens so fast. workout for the arms I'll tell you oh cool look at that chemistry in the kitchen guys <laughs> look at that that's awesome doesn't take very long to do this and boy do you have a messy pan after and there's there's your maple sugar guys you can kind of see that I have a really good yield of uh, maple sugar there I put two cups of uh, maple syrup in there and I've got probably two cups of the uh, of the sugar because it kind of fluffs out after. I'm just going to show you here. There are bigger clumps. There are bigger clumps in here. And, you know, for example, if you wanted the thin stuff, you can just kind of put it through some kind of a, a sieve, get the chunks out and make it all nice and fine. And then, you know, you can save this stuff for baking or whatever and use their finer things for the tea or your coffee. So you can use something like this. And you see there's a... Uh, there's some pieces right there of the sugar. And then this is the fine stuff you get if you were to just put it through a little strainer like that. So I don't really care though, um, whatever. <laughs> sugar, it's gonna melt in my drink, not a big deal. I just wanna show you, I, um, I just picked a piece of the syrup that's now turned into a hard ball candy off of the thermometer. So you can see if you were to make little candies, you can. Um, if you stir it really vigorously, you'll end up with a sugar. If you don't and let it sit, it'll turn into a really chewy, really chewy candy. Makes your teeth stick together when you enjoy it. Um, and it's very mapley, woodsy, and a caramelly flavor. And just to show you guys, I just put this through a coffee grinder, probably overdid it a little bit, but that's what it looks like. It's sugary, uh, it's very, very powdery, and um, the coffee grinder will help take out, like I said earlier, these big chunks right here but it's up to you how fine you want your sugar. Well, time to put some in my afternoon coffee. There we go. It's very mapley flavor and caramelly as well. Mm, very good. And there you go, from maple syrup into maple sugar. Maple sugar is a great way to carry your favorite taste with you on your camping trips in the woods without any worries of it spilling. And so 90% sucrose, so super sweet for your morning campfire coffee.
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode today and learned a bit more about making maple syrup. It's so sweet and it's so awesome to have something that I made at home to sweeten my baking and my coffee in the morning. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, leave them down below in the comments. Have a great week. Take care. Thank you.